Okay, so welcome to 7TV Fantasy Behind the Scenes. These are going to be hopefully short, little um, sort of production insights with uh, members of the development team, just talking about the, the project, where we're up to, um, and little sort of insights, really. Uh, I've got Carl and Peter here with me today. Um, so if you guys just want to quickly sort of introduce yourselves, sort of tell, tell everyone sort of, you know, who you are. Uh, are we okay to start with you, Carl? Yeah, cheers. Hey, uh, I'm Carl Proton. I'm uh, Managing Director of Crooked Dice Game Studio, Games Design Studio, uh, and I've worked with Edge Hill University since 2017, I think it is, uh, on a couple of different projects um, to do with our 70 v game system. Brilliant. And uh, uh, Peter? Oh, I'm uh, Peter Wright. I'm Senior Lecturer in Creative Writing and English Literature at Edge Hill University. In Lancashire, um, and as Carl was saying, we've been working together now for three, three and a half years on developing uh, collaborative projects between Edge Hill University Press and uh, Crooked Dice. Brilliant, and uh, I'm obviously Eddie Price, uh, worked as a game designer for 7TV Fantasy, um, and it's been sort of a, a really interesting project. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you guys, I obviously know, but I wanted to ask you guys about how 7TV sort of came about in terms of the collaboration with Crooked Dice and Ed Chill. Uh, Carl, are you right to, or Peter, you know, whoever? Yeah, I was, I was going to say, it started with me buying miniatures from Carl, really, and Carl does, does lovely miniatures, so I was a customer, and I was down at the UK Games Expo in 2017, so I, I looked up Carl's stand and we got chatting about um, our mutual affection for Edgar Rice Burroughs. And I said, would, would you mind if I perhaps wrote something for 7TV, which was a kind of lost world, hollow earth kind of thing. Uh, and Carl said, yeah, yeah, please, by all means. Um, anyway, I, I got home and I started to, to think about it. And then I thought, I've got a different idea here. And at the same time, from uh, back in 2015, uh, the creative writing team had started Edge Hill University Press. And every year, um, Edge Hill University Press worked with a publisher from outside the university to produce a book using um, you know, that cooperative kind of approach with students forming um, part of an intern team that saw the book through production and ways with the authors or the poets or the script writers, um, and then sort of saw the book through production as well, working as interns with, with the publishers. I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if we could do something similar with, with games design? But rather than having the students work with a sort of editorial kind of approach, maybe we could get them to sort of work on the game and work as games designers and developers. And I put that idea to, um, to Rog and James, who ran Edge Hill University Press, and they said, well, if you can persuade anybody to, to do that with you, um, yeah, go for it. Um, so I thought, I know a man who might. Uh, so I got in touch with Carl and said, you know, you have know that idea I had about, about Pulp, uh, about the Edgar Rice Boris thing. I said, well, why don't we do an entire pulp box set with you and me sort of lead designers and a design team composed of, you know, creative writing students, English lit students, history students, um, and, and we'll, we'll just open it up and see who applies, never, never really knowing whether anybody would have applied. Um, and then, of course, we got a really good design team that came out of that, but it's largely because... Edge University Press said, yeah, give it a go, and, and Carl was prepared to uh, to take a risk, really, on, on what seemed like a bit of a mad idea at the time. Brilliant. So 7TV Pulp was a two-year project, collaborated with students, and then they obviously transitioned into into fantasy. So how, how did you decide on, on fantasy then? That was kind of an easy one, really. Um, the other sets that we've got in the past have kind of been niche um, action adventure kind of settings. We've got uh, Inch High Spy Fire, which is James Bond and um, kind of action adventure TV. Apocalypse, which is dystopian future, so Mad Max and Terminator and you know zombie apocalypse, that kind of thing. But Pulp was was a, a, a bit of a different one um, because it, the students hadn't really got a lot of experience of um, what Pulp was really beyond. Indiana Jones, I guess, was the best kind of touchstone for people to be able to go and understand what it was. So I did a lot of research in the early phases just to really bring them up to speed. Um, but if you're anything like me, most in people's introduction to kind of the 
the nerd sphere. Um, and there is probably through fantasy, I, I would have thought most people have seen, um, you, you know, Lord of the Rings or read Harry Potter or have a vague understanding of kind of what the the, the kind of the bones of, of, of the genre are. Um, so it seemed a really obvious kind of fourth pillar, fourth box game for, for us to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that certainly proved the case that the, you know, I hope you found it was, it was much easier to kind of, the films were a lot more accessible. The pulp stuff, we, we had the students sitting down and watching hours and hours and hours of um, the cliffhanger serials, which are not the most yeah. accessible thing, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. But but the research phase was all sitting down and watching kind of loads of different, largely mm-hmm. I, 70s and 80s fantasy movies, Pete, I think it's fair, isn't it, and series? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we, we went back into sort of the 1960s a little bit with the Ray Harryhausen movies and, and things like that. But nobody was required to spend, you know, five and a half hours watching Bulldog Drummond or, you know, Flash Gordon or anything like that. I mean, Flash Gordon's worth watching for, you know, five and a half hours. But maybe, maybe all those jungle adventures really aren't. So that was a real trial. You guys had it easy, I think, you know. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Go and watch Conan and Sword and Sword King, Beastmaster and Lord of the Rings and stuff. It's a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, I have to say the, the research for fantasy was probably one of the most enjoyable sort of experiences for me. I know other people had it a lot worse than me. What, um, did, you, what did you get, Eddie? I got I got Conan and Sword and Sword and Sorcery, so oh, okay. what, what Peter said. So I got the, uh, the good stuff, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... I think there's probably... There's, there's probably more good stuff around than, than bad stuff, and most of it's only two hours longer than maximum. Like that Lord of the Rings is a bit longer. Um, but, you know, five and a half hours, 15 episode chapter play from the 1930s. Yeah, yeah it's a bit of a trial. So did you find that more students were engaged with fantasy as opposed to pulp just because of the genre and how popular it is for, for maybe students nowadays to be sort of more engaged with fantasy? than Pulp, maybe? Definitely. Um, yeah. I think we've, we've all kind of grown up in a fantasy landscape in some ways. Um, mm. you know, the, the success of Dungeons and Dragons in the 70s, um, the rise of, of fantasy fiction, especially amongst young adult fiction as well, it, it, it's kind of in the culture. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Game of Thrones really popularised fantasy with perhaps people who, who never really thought about fantasy or read fantasy before. Harry Potter has been a massive help as well. So most of the students of, of sort of your age and a little bit younger have grown up embedded in, in fantasy. And it yeah. meant that when we talked about, you know, a fantasy war game, everybody really knew what we were talking about. Where we say a war game based on pulp, it's like, what is that? You know, mm-hmm. like, well, it's, it's cinema serials and it's pulp magazines. But, you know, pulp magazines in the, the, the 20s, 30s and 40s, I mean, that's a long time ago now for, for young people. It's a long time ago for people Carl and my age, let alone for you guys. Um, <laughs> but if you think, I mean, Conan the Barbarian is still quite a long time ago. It's like 40 years old, near enough. But somehow it's much more accessible. You have their colour, their, their modern. We still recognise some of the stars that are in it. You know, um, I don't think many people would recognise Buster Crab, um, but they'll recognise Arnold Schwarzenegger. No. Um, so yeah, it was easier, and, and I think that really helped the project as well because that research phase for the pulp when everybody was watching the, the serials and things took a good four months. I mean, I think it was people felt it was a real grind, um, but the design team we've had with you guys with with fantasy really whipped through the the viewing and and the, the research and the note taking really very very quickly, and that helped us to get ahead. Uh, and be in a much better place than we were with Pulp, you know, two years previously when we were still working on, on the research in February. We were pretty much done with the research by December, which was great. Yeah. I mean, it, it, to me, it didn't really feel like work. You know, I, I think I said this to you before. It was so, so sort of interesting to come home and my girlfriend would be like, well, well, what have you got from university? And she's like, and I've got to say, oh, I've just got to watch a film and make some notes on it, you know. <laughs> and it, was, it was brilliant. And we were sort of watching Stardust together and, you know, making notes on it. It was, it was brilliant. It, 17 days is all about distilling down those kind of tropes and archetypes into, yeah. into game terms, really. Uh, and I think the shorthand of fantasy you know, if I, if I were to say trusted companion to you, 
um, in there, which is one of the archetypes we kind of come up with. You could probably, it wouldn't take you too long to get to Samwise, I don't mm. think, um, in that. So that just speeded up the whole process and people were a lot more tuned in, I think, um, mm. to what those kind of tropes were. It certainly seemed in the in the sort of first draft of the profiles and stuff that we got back that people had were, could kind of see where a lot of those little touch points were. So. Yeah. So now that the 70 year fantasy is sort of nearly sort of launched and you can kind of reflect back on the process between fantasy and pull, what would you say like the, the sort of biggest differences are? Maybe start with you, Carl. The, the differences are that once we started doing all those profiles, we couldn't stop. There's a lot more stuff kind of in the box this time round um, because we had we had a good set of genres and we included stuff that was inspired by kind of pen and paper things as well. So we had kind of all those D&D mods. So there were a lot um, in there. But it was what we were just talking about. It's that shorthand of people kind of getting in. Um, and then just the working experience has been much nicer. It, 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 weirdly, this time around, even though kind of COVID impacted um, in yeah. there, we've had a lot more kind of interaction kind of between the team as well. Okay. Well, I think for me, the big difference has been um, the, the uh, Seven TV Fantasy was really, really supported by the university. We had the Students Opportunity Fund that the university has. Um, has supported everybody's work in that, and it meant I got some time on my timetable to to work on uh, 70V Fantasy, what Paul Poe was doing in my spare time. Um, so that was that was quite tough actually the first couple of years, but Fantasy has been uh, has been a much easier project despite all the challenges we've had over the last sort of year or so. Um, yeah. COVID, uh, it's still been much easier to stay on top of the, the, the project and, and devote quite a lot of time to it, which has been been really good, actually. Okay, that's great. Thanks, guys. So uh, hopefully we'll get some more of these videos for next week and the week after, part of like a, a series. Um, but it's been great chatting to you, and hopefully the viewers can get quite a lot of information about this. Thanks, Eddie. All right. Cheers, Eddie. Cheers. Bye now. Thanks, Bye. Time.